Today I have a conversation with a good friend of mine, Kundan Joshi, who's the CEO of a company called The App Lab. A phenomenal company that's been in the software, mobile space, they're doing AI, blockchain, a lot of innovative, interesting things. Kundan came to Canada in 2000 and over this 20 year span, his company has grown tremendously and he himself has won numerous awards. But I want to know what the inside motivations of Kundan are and I hope you'll join me for this conversation to find out more about my friend Kundan Joshi. Kundan, it's been fantastic spending this day with you. I know it's uh, been a lot longer <laughs> with me than uh, maybe you had hoped. I know you're a very busy guy, so I, I really appreciate this, brother Ben. No, I've loved it. One of the things that really inspires me about your story is how you've, uh, you know, you came here in 2000 and as, as an immigrant here and, and, you know, being in the college space myself, you, you came as a student, you graduated from Western, um, computer science degree. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you faced uh, upon graduation? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I did my first year engineering in India uh, and my parents migrated here. So uh, the nuances of communicating in North America is I right. felt I lacked. Uh, so up while they were, I was looking for any sort of job, yeah. I was more inclined towards something that's where I'm facing or talking to as many people as possible. Nice. Ended up going into a door-to-door -door sales job, yeah. which was yeah. an interesting experience by itself. Yeah. Having doors shut on my face and yeah. dogs uh, being uh, oh, man. Uh, thrown at me. <laughs> Luckily, I'm a dog person, so yeah. I ended up befriending most of the dogs that were thrown at me. <laughs> is it a nature or nurture question? Like, do you think that is ingrained in you in, in terms of your personality or was it the environment? Because for me, I'm actually uh, naturally a shy person. I like staying <laughs> in my comfort zone, <laughs> right. but I, I recognize, um, you know, seeing my father, seeing my mother, like my mom really pushed me on stage, um, sure. you know, to speak. And had she not done that, I don't think I would be the person I am today, but sure. I was forced into that. For sure. Do, do you, you know, uh, were you inspired same, by someone? Yeah. Same. It's more nurture than nature. Uh, yeah. Naturally, I'm an introvert as well. Yeah. Uh, in high school, I was an introvert. I had one best friend, and that's what I didn't talk to anyone else. Yeah. Uh, it was that sounds so ri like I cannot believe yeah. that <laughs> knowing you now. Yeah. It's an interesting story where uh, we had to change classes. I mean, so basically, the way it worked in India in high school was in from grade eight to 10, all the top students moved to one one class, whereas right. the rest moved to other classes. So I was like one of those, so I moved into one class with, apart from me and my best friend, everyone else in this on that class was, was different. So, okay. and in that at that time, I got bullied for being a bright student who was introvert, who was overweight. Yeah. So, I, I, so I realized how important it is uh, for me to uh, be social, yeah. uh, how important it was for me to create those relationships with people, uh, have a keen interest in other people. So all those things, I had to force myself to do it yeah. in order to protect myself from being bullied. Yeah. And yeah. As, a, as a part of that, that just became, I, it's still not my nature, that yeah. became an, a habit for me. So I, I would say for me, it's not nature, it's nurture. Yeah. I was very much interested in uh, your your experience at the kiosk, the Rogers kiosk, yeah. and uh, I'd love to hear more about that. For sure. So, in a way, interestingly enough, that was a drive for me to put myself in a comfort zone that landed me there. Oh, really? So, okay. while I was doing really well at door-to-door -door sales, I didn't like it, to be very honest. Yeah. I didn't like interrupting people at their home while they yeah. were having dinner and whatnot. So, I didn't like that part of it while I was doing it well. So. I was just going, like, I was at a mall and someone sold me high speed internet. I was like, yeah, I need yeah. high speed internet. There yeah. you go. So I'm like, wait a minute, how much commission you make? Yeah. And he's like, $30. I yeah. just made $30 off you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I want that job. Where I was like, I want to meet your manager. I want to find a way. And I was just, I was on yeah, him. Awesome. And he's like, you know what? I like your drive. I'm going to give you his phone number. Yeah. So yeah. I, he gave me the phone number. I kept on calling him. He's like, not interested. We have too many yeah. people. And then I told him that, okay, how about this? I'll bring another friend of mine yeah. and we'll make 50 sales for you yeah. in half of a shift. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. yeah. And that convinced him. He's like, okay, you know what? Sure. So one of my buddies was doing well in door-to-door -door as well. Both of yeah. us went in there and we made 60 sales. 
nice uh, 30 each or whatever uh, yeah. and uh, that was that was it we c came a shift earlier we observed what the people earlier were doing and in that that summer I think I made six figures in like two and yeah. a half months yeah. and so it realized when you're providing real value to people there's no cap on how much you can make so that just opened doors for me my name is Kundan Joshi and I'm the founder and CEO of the App Lab. How great of an organizer are you? Uh, I'm a pretty good organizer. Yeah. I so I definitely have a process-minded uh, flow. Cut out everything else that's fluff, that's trash, that's not important in your in my top three things, yeah. and just stay focused. Which is why even my to-do list is always buckets. So I use Kanban board for my to-do list. So yeah. so let's say if sales is my focus that time, yeah. that's my sales bucket. This is my strategy bucket. This is my finance bucket. This is whatever. I got to tell you, Kundan, I met my wife playing ping pong. No way. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so my strategy with that was, right. uh, as we were playing, I, w I wasn't going to let her win. Right. Because I wanted a partner in life. I didn't uh, want uh, somebody that I could run over, nor that was going to try to run over me. Right. So I would, um, I would attempt to cheat. Hmm. <laughs> And uh, she would call me out on that. Right. And I would do like, you know, net shots, like <laughs> just off to the side and she would die for it. So she was, you know, really competitive. Right. Um, and I loved that, you know, like for it's, sure. For sure. We, we met online. So it was a great way to like um, figure out who she was because your guard's kind of down, like for sure. when you're playing a game, right? Oh, I'm Ooh, gonna use that line shot. by the way, I, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very competitive in yeah. any sport, and even with my wife, and even with my daughter. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna use that to say why <laughs> I'm competitive, because <laughs> I, because because she's a partner in life. So, so thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want your daughter to be an engineer or an entrepreneur? If you could choose, yes, she <laughs> will choose. But what would you, what would you uh, want for her? Well, I mean. Yeah, if I was to choose, I would choose entrepreneur uh, yeah. or I guess a combination like I'm <laughs> an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, uh, it's it's about what she feels passionate about. Right. It's not so much about doing well for yourself by being charge of your destiny or or having a uh, having a lifestyle of an entrepreneur. Any field of work you go in, I mean, there'll be challenges, there'll be fun parts and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, when those challenges come in, when those failures kick in, if what the people who stand and withstand those failures are the ones who truly feel passionate about what they are doing, they enjoy the process as opposed to being dejected by the rejection or dejected right. by the failure. So if whatever she does, if she enjoys that process uh, right. of, uh, of putting her efforts and performing it and doing her best yeah. in whatever she is doing, uh, that's where she'll be successful. I think this is a good time to share something with you. You know, being in the college space, there's a lot of international students that I meet. And there was one guy that said something interesting um, that I'd like to share with you and get your thoughts on. And he said, he is our Steve Jobs. <laughs> what, what do you feel about that, hearing that? He's our Steve Jobs. Yeah. That's very humbling. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm entirely deserving of that title, uh, at least yet. Uh, Steve Jobs, someone I admire a lot. He's a, he's a true visionary. Uh, I don't think I can compare myself yet, but it's a lo very humbling and very kind of uh, him to say that. I mean, it's not so much about trying to be in a mold of someone else. Uh, it's about charting your own path. So I don't uh, believe in idealizing certain people. Sure. I mean, although I, I look up to them for what they stand for and what they are great at, the, the kind of design mind or design thinking Steve Jobs has, uh, I don't think I'll, I'll ever be able to achieve that. Uh, kind well, of you've designed some amazing things here, I yeah. must say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, not in the same comparison, but uh, I would love to at some point. But I, th I think, you know, not I think, I know, um, you know, being connected with international students myself, and, and I don't mean to just pin you in that category, uh, because I think you're very inspirational to a lot of people. 
but especially for those people that are coming as international students as you did once upon a time um, they go through so many struggles here and for them to see you at, at this height and and I know you know you feel you still have a long way to go but for them to see that coming here where they get bombarded by uh, so many obstacles as you are well Certainly. aware you're a huge inspiration for them and uh, you know, I, I, I admire you for that, that you, you're inspiring uh, a, a generation of, of newcomers to Canada. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's fantastic what you're doing. So maybe you don't feel like you're uh, Steve Jobs yet, um, uh, but a lot of people think that. And uh, so it's, it's nice to be uh, get hear, you know, your thought process and, and how you've gone through that journey. You have numerous awards um for for the app lab and and yourself but hearing these personal points right that you i don't i don't know how many people know about your rogers kiosk experience mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people highly capable people that are you know um hearing this podcast or watching this interview or or you know seeing your uh, awards and and knowing that they're there and they can come to your you know reach the h kind of heights you did is is hugely inspirational so and that's yeah. and, and that's a very good point because that's one of the i guess one of the responsibilities that we need to take right i mean we, as you we meaning like as as r immigrants as uh, as us entrepreneurs as right? entrepreneurs yeah uh it's uh, as a new Im immigrant it's it's obviously very difficult very challenging right uh, and it's uh, it lies within a, uh, within people like us to really create good role models yeah. for them to really aspire to to do their best, keep doing, uh, keep aspiring to uh, to be the best in uh, in their journey to the best versions of themselves, uh, and know that eventually they will get rewarded. It's yeah. not easy. It's a difficult road. Uh, but I mean, when I talk to new immigrants, one thing I say is you have already taken uh, a much more uh, ambitious and uh, risky uh, decision than most people oh who you're surrounded sure. with will ever make yeah. of moving into a new country. You already have displayed uh, all characteristics of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so the fact that you've done that, don't stop doing that. Yeah. Now that you've taken a massive uh, getting out of your comfort zone move by just completely changing the environment uh, around you, just keep doing that. Keep putting yourself in positions of being in out of your comfort zone. Keep exploring the culture. Keep uh, trying to understand how business works. And uh, when you immerse yourself, these opportunities will uncover themselves. Yeah. Whereas you truly can become the best version for yourself and uh, and be successful. Well, you're doing fantastic things, Finland. Uh, brother, it's been a pleasure. Uh, to spend the day with you here and uh, to get to know you. I mean, you know, we get to know each other on dinners and things like that, but this is a little bit different because I get to dive in uh, <laughs> perhaps a, a little more deeper. So I really appreciate you uh, uh, joining us today and, and sharing your story. And, uh, you know, if, if anybody wants to get connected with you, I assume get on the website, uh, yeah. theapplab.com. Theapplab with two Bs, uh, dot com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty open to invitations. Okay, <laughs> awesome. And you can follow the App Lab on Twitter as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, brother. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for uh, this wonderful session. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs>